Right now in California, there's a push to rewrite how math works, not just in the classroom, but in the law. Two bills, AB 1217 and AB 500, are working their way through the state legislature. They would pressure UCs to accept watered down math courses as substitutes for Algebra 2 in their admissions processes. My name is Gary Tan, and I'm the president and CEO of Y Combinator, a startup accelerator that's funded some of the most impactful tech companies of the last two decades, including Airbnb, Coinbase, and DoorDash. I'm also a graduate of California public schools and a strong believer in the power of rigorous technical training to lift people into abundance. And that's why I feel so strongly that these fake math courses are a betrayal of our students. My name is Jelani Nelson, and I'm professor and chair of the computer science division in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences at UC Berkeley. UC faculty already tried to stop this once. In 2023, they already reversed a decision to let these courses count for college admissions after professors warned they weren't rigorous enough. I met with a couple teachers who actually teach the curriculum and I sat with them and I said, hey, you know, there's all this controversy about what, you know, what the course actually covers and whether it's appropriate as an advanced math course and so forth. You know, in your opinion, does this course um, assume Algebra 2 knowledge? They said, no, absolutely not. Does it teach Algebra 2 knowledge? Does it teach most of Algebra 2? No, absolutely not. But a group of bureaucrats is determined to keep kids in these classes, and they're trying to make it illegal for universities to say no. This is a betrayal of California's children who are being denied the rigorous math education they deserve by ideologues determined to sacrifice excellence for the illusion of equity. I had no idea what math frameworks even were, never heard of it, you know, I'm not an education researcher, um, but I am someone who I think cares deeply about K-12 education. So I started searching around, like what are these high school data science courses and finding the materials and looking through them myself. And you know, it was fairly obvious once I started looking at the materials that no, the, these courses, they don't align with standards for college and career readiness. You look at the course materials, it says the only prerequisite is Algebra 1, which is again a ninth grade course. It's not, it doesn't say anything about needing Algebra 2. You just do like a control F text search through the course materials for the word logarithm and the word never appears in the entire year's worth of course materials. To understand how we got here, we have to go back a decade to a failed experiment in San Francisco. In 2014, San Francisco Unified School District actually removed Algebra 1 from 8th grade, from all public schools at 8th grade, in the name of equity. Reformers claimed that too many students were failing early math, especially low-income Black and Latino kids. So they delayed algebra to 9th grade for everyone. The goal was to close gaps. That's what they said anyway. But Instead, achievement gaps remained and acceleration. The people who really wanted to take advanced math early, that went underground. Students with means simply found workarounds, either by enrolling in compression courses that packed two years of math into one or opting out entirely to private schools. Students without means, like me when I was a kid, I would have just fallen behind. And that's what happened in San Francisco. In fact, a comprehensive 10-year study of the policy found that it drove huge drops in enrollment in AP courses across the board, while, quote unquote, large ethno-racial gaps in advanced math course taking remained. Thankfully, this crazy policy was finally reversed last year. But rather than learn from that failure, California has doubled down. In 2021, Stanford professor Joe Bowler, who contributed to designing the SFUSD algebra delay policy and her collaborators, took San Francisco's model and wrote it into the first draft of the California Math Framework, a document issued every seven years by the state's Board of Education to provide guidance for math education to public school teachers statewide. The new CMF, as it was called, which was officially published in 2023, discourages acceleration, promotes teaching around 
big ideas rather than specific proficiency standards and encourages some students to take an alternative to Algebra 2, a watered-down data science class. This didn't go unnoticed. People who understood the stakes and the math spoke up. There were a lot of open letters. I co-authored one of them at the end of 2021, talking about you know, the problems with this anti-acceleration approach, but also talking about the problems with these data science courses and the fact that these courses uh, that were being created did not align with standards and also provided poor preparation for kids who wanted to follow majors and careers that were mathematical including STEM, but also, say, quantitative social sciences. In other words, these people were trying to pass off courses lacking even the most fundamental concepts from Algebra 2 as somehow equivalent. It was absurd. But a staff office at the UC Office of the President mistakenly accepted these data science courses as a valid substitute. To this day, the state's largest public school district, LA Unified, offers one of these logarithm-free introduction to data science courses as an alternative to Algebra 2. A lot of UC faculty didn't even realize that these courses were being approved erroneously. And then we realized it when we looked at the framework, because the framework cited that. It was like, oh, this is happening locally at the UC. As faculty across the UC and Cal State system began to notice that these dumbed-down math courses had been erroneously approved, they began to speak out. Cal State faculty members passed a resolution expressing concern over the acceptance of these data science courses, which they found provided inadequate preparation for college and career readiness. Eventually, a UC faculty committee called BOARS Boars, realized the error and, in July of 2023, announced that they would no longer accept the data science classes as valid substitutes for Algebra 2. The UC basically you know, put its foot down and said, look, yes, there was an error that was made here before by the staff office, but we've now discovered it, and we're now seeing that the math framework is deviating from its charge. It's promoting these courses that don't align with the standards that they're supposed to uphold. The UC actually has not said that data science courses can't be approved. They said these courses should not have been approved and made it very clear that uh, data science courses could be approved if they actually align with the standards that the state itself has adopted. Not only are these courses not up to standard, there's an even deeper level of corruption going on too. One of the authors of the math framework releases her own high school data science curriculum while the math framework that's being written is pushing for kids to take a third year data science course as an alternative pathway. And also if you look at chapter five, chapter five, the data science chapter in the initial draft, it highlights this new UCube data science course by name, uh, basically advertising it to the public. It also highlights the UCLA course by name, highlighting it to the public. And the creator of the UCLA course is on the advisory board of the UCube data science course. Faculty were relieved when the UC decided not to accept these fake data science classes, but so were tech industry leaders who understood the importance of strong math foundations and had watched the assault on our state's math education with horror. This letter, uh, the title was Strong, strong uh, Math Foundations Are Important for AI. It, ta it, it, it um, celebrated the UC's decision to revoke approval of these courses as substituting for uh, third year mathematics. It made it clear that the people signing this letter felt that we want people who have strong foundations in mathematics for our hiring. We don't want to hire people who don't have those strong foundations. And the first signature on that letter was Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. But the bureaucrats would not go down without a fight. And they were like, you know, it was kind of the, the, the feeling in the air was kind of how dare the UC do such a thing, it's a slap in the face to the state board and to the Department of Education without warning. And you know, how did you guys just change policy like this? Which is wrong, they didn't change policy, they enforced policy, but how do you change policy like this without ample warning and without consultation from other stakeholders? But it was a lie. Other stakeholders like CSU asked for the UC to take action. 
These bills that are now working their way through the state legislature right now are an attempt to punish the UC for daring to defy the Joe Bowlers of the world. AB 1217 would strongly urge the UC to accept data science as a substitute for Algebra 2, regardless of standards alignment, and AB 500 would require an overly cumbersome process to make even the slightest modifications to undergraduate admission criteria. In other words, they're throwing the heavy machinery of bureaucracy at the UC to try to get it to backtrack and start accepting data science classes again. If you're watching this and thinking, this is insane, you're right. Our kids deserve real math, real standards, real opportunity that can serve as an escalator out of poverty and into economic freedom. They don't deserve to be duped into taking watered down math classes by bureaucrats trying to push an ideological agenda. So here's what you can do. Call your state representative and tell them to oppose AB 1217 and AB 500. These are bills that would strip UC of control over its own admissions policy and make legitimate the fake math pipeline. Second, share this video, send it to parents, teachers, alumni, donors, especially anyone connected to the UC system. And if you're at Stanford, ask why a professor here at Stanford of which I'm an alum and a donor, has been pushing this agenda for years while running an organization that generates revenue from it. This is a fight for the future of public education in California. We owe it to the kids across the state to fight for their right to learn real math. <laughs>